High bar versus low bar squatting. Which one should you do? Watch this. Our next caller is Jonathan from New Jersey. What's up, Jonathan? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, what's, what's up, happening? Man? Not much just here. Uh, first, I want to thank you for taking my, uh, my question. I appreciate you guys. You guys are like my pre-workout when it comes to life. I watch you guys a lot, so I appreciate this a lot. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. So basically, my question is, I know you guys talk about squats a lot. Um, I haven't heard you see, hear anything about low bar squatting. Um, I low bar squat a lot. I got into it a lot before I did high bar squatting. So basically, my question is, for low bar squatting, how do I up the weight? And how do I relieve the pain? Because I can choose to get uh, wrist pain with flexion. And my second part of the question is, I also deadlift. And I know both are hip dominant. So does it make sense to do both or to leave or to do one and leave the other one out? Yeah, I would look at two things. Uh, I would look at thoracic and shoulder mobility because that's what's going to help you grab the bar better. And I would look at ankle mobility because that's probably why you you go so you, you like to favor low bar. By the way, low bar, high bar, they're both great. I, I really don't care if one if a person does one or the other. Ideally, you'd want to be able to practice both of them. Uh, obviously one's a little more upright. The other one, you're going to bend over a little bit more. Are you tall? How tall are you? No, nah, I'm a short guy. I'm only five, seven. Oh, and you low bar too. Okay. What about most guys, most like taller guys love low bar. I mean, I love low yeah. bar because of how tall, how long a levers I have. So it's much easier. Was for that me. how you were taught or did that just feel more natural? I never was taught squatting. So I can kind of relate where Adam came in when I first got into lifting. I was never a leg guy. Um, if I did do legs, it was like the leg extensions and, uh, and that's really it on some type of squatting, but I never really got into squatting. As I got older, I started getting into squatting a lot and then videos. I got into like powerlifting and uh, lifting through that ways. And I started watching videos from powerlifters to squat university, uh, starting strength to like to get my squat up or just to learn it. And then from there, I just kept doing the reps and then doing low, doing low weight. And then from there, just kept going up and up. Yeah. You know, you could, yeah. you could have tried too, Jonathan. Do you go to a gym or do you work at a home? I go to a gym. If they have a safety squat bar, I mean, that's a great way to do a high bar squat and it's yeah. easier to get into position than, than a traditional barbell. And you could practice that. That'll keep you upright and give you kind of that high bar, um, feel. Um, it's a little more quad dominant. I would say mix it up a little bit, but really the, the, the question you had about the wrist is you got to work more on your thoracic and shoulder yeah. mobility. Do you have MAPS Prime or MAPS Prime Pro? Yeah, by wall chance? press. Um, no, actually it's funny you say that because when I first got into low bar, I actually had, um because I got into uh, CrossFit, um, CrossFit kind of messed me up in a sense where I was, before that I was perfectly fine after I did CrossFit and a lot of squatting overhead squatting um i developed a bad hip impingement or a bad hip pain um it wasn't for you guys you actually guys taught me about the frog um the frog stretch and i've been doing it every day and i alleviated that and that's one of the other reasons why i did a uh, uh, low bar because for that for low bar it helps me help me get into a lower a bigger depth than high bar so i do a lot of uh, mobility work maybe not as much as i should be but i try to get as much frog pressing you know pigeons, anything I can to alleviate that pain. I do a lot of uh, ankle uh, mobility as well. And when it comes to shoulders, I do have a, a shoulder um, harm. I, I, I hurt my shoulder a long time ago from being in the military, but I still do shoulder breakers whenever I can to try to alleviate that as yeah. well. Well, so, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you maps prime and I want you to do the wall press. Yes. So uh, it's, that's a money one for every, yeah. before I squat always, especially if I'm going to do low bar, uh, zone one, the the wall press that Sal's talking about is money. Yeah. And you, uh, you, what's cool about it is, you like go get under the bar without doing it first. So go right into your workout so you can feel where you're at, and then go do it, and then come back and you'll you'll see a difference and you'll feel relief on your on your wrist and your shoulders right yeah. away. We'll send that over to you. Oh man, appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Uh, thank you guys. All right, right brother. Jonathan. Boy, that's weird, huh? CrossFit got him hurt. 
I was trying so hard not to say something, Sal. So. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. uh, we've, I, made it, we've made it almost a couple of weeks without a jab. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, it's I know when people talk about you know high bar, low bar. I mean, it's I think it's great to practice both. It's not a huge difference though if you like one versus the other. It's not yeah, that big. Of a I especially low if you do. Bar. Yeah. You know, look, I like low bar, and then I do front squats. I do both, and so I do both. I think there's, I think there's, there's, I, I couldn't do high bar early on. So I uh, high bar, uh, I could not get the like he's saying I couldn't get the depth mm -hmm. before, but that was a lot to do with my hips and my ankles. Once mm -hmm. I addressed my hips and ankles, got really good, especially at, ankles for me. Yeah, so I actually really like. I mean, it's. It, I think it's more difficult to get in a high bar deep squat than it is a low bar. Like you, you obviously sure. you have a little bit of advantage when you have a low bar to get down into a deeper squat. So I, well, like, I like that you mentioned the safety bar because like, yeah. it just provides that like kind of I don't know it's somewhere in the middle where you do get. Um, especially if like mobility is a limitation, mm -hmm. like it helps mm -hmm. to kind of at least get that, uh, uh, you know, anterior kind of driven type of squat as well. Yeah, but I you, do that plus the front squat. But you definitely know why. I mean, he, he said he's got a shoulder issue. Yep. I mean, yeah. That's why he's not he's not able to retract all the way. Like you said, yep. thoracic yep. mobility and shoulder mobility. And he's feeling it in his wrist because his wrists are getting cranked on. Yeah, back they're, there. they're compensating. But it has to do with his shoulders not being able to get all the way back. Once he gets that, you know, prime that, he'll, he'll feel a difference the first time he does it. Totally. Yep. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 